Hi, I'm Aloni Bhatt. Now, many of us know of cloud computing and also we've heard of how revolutionary it has been when it comes to businesses and the way it is impacting businesses. So what is cloud computing? Now think about cloud computing as renting a really powerful computer somewhere and you can run your applications, your programs on it and all the data on it is secure. And that is one of the reasons why businesses seem to like it because what it allows them to do is that it allows them to be more productive, it brings in more efficiencies and that means businesses can actually grow. But what is the future of cloud computing? And today I have a very interesting guest with me who's going to tell us about how cloud computing is really reshaping the business landscape. Karmendra Trivedi, Welcome to Economic Times. You're the sales director with Canonical India, and it's really wonderful for us to have you here with us to talk to us about embracing the future of uh, cloud and how that is going to drive business innovation. Thank you for having me here and giving, giving us an opportunity to speak with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about Canonical, you know, before we dive into sure. this whole world of cloud computing. So uh, I've been into the open source uh, technology from last 13 years and although I've been into the industry from uh, 17 odd years, uh, open source technology came into the passion when, my, uh, when, uh, when I joined my previous organization. So the open source organizations give, you the, fl give the customer the flexibility to use, uh, to use uh, open source technology and uh, the benefits of the open source technology lies in its collaborative nature transparency, collaboration, and it gives the opportunity for the innovation, customization, and cost effectiveness. Yeah. So that is, the, that is the reason why open source technology is widely accepted uh, within, the, within the industries. So uh, open source technology gives customers the flexibility to access of the source code, to modify it, and to redistribute it. So this is the beauty of open source technology. It's not, it's not that uh, open source technology is only used by the uh, bigger organization, but they are used by the SMBs as well. Right. So, uh, so I think that that's why I'm passionate. Attractive. Yeah, that's why I'm passionate about open source technology. I'm, I'm trying to contribute as much as possible for the digital journey of India. All right. Okay. You know, that's wonderful. So let's touch upon that digital journey of India, right? India wants to be this $1 trillion digital economy by 2026. Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of it, as you said, could be powered by businesses you know who are using cloud computing so talk to us about uh, the economic opportunity that India has you know with cloud absolutely so uh, I think you must be aware about uh, that uh, India has recently surpassed uh, uh, UK and has become the fifth largest economy in the world yeah so that clearly indicates the potential of India economy and I strongly believe that cloud technology can contribute uh, in terms of innovation and innovation can drive and can add to the economic of India. If I read out from some fact and figures from the NASCOM, so NASCOM has simply predicted that in 2026, the cloud contribution towards the GDP would be around 370, uh, 300, between 315 billion US dollar to 375 billion USD dollar. That would be the 8% of GDP which would be seen by the uh, uh, government of India in 2026. That will create more than 14 million of direct or indirect employment. Right. So these are the uh, direct or indirect impact that is coming from the cloud technology in the Indian economy. So uh, if, if I uh, talk on the nutshell, there are the four things that is going to get impacted by the adoption mm. of the cloud technology. One is your GDP, mm. second is your employment, third is your innovation and entrepreneurship and your uh, uh, technology progress. Right. So these are the four things that is going to get impacted from, from the adoption of the cloud technology. Right. So obviously, you know, that is also the opportunity cost in case of India lags in adopting, uh, you know, cloud technology. From your vantage, Dokar Mendra, tell me, you know, for businesses, uh, what are the barriers or what hinders them from adopting cloud? India won't be able to, uh, you know, uh, pace in terms of adopting the cloud, there would be a lot of opportunity cost. Mm. So it will push India on the reduces the competitiveness mm. and uh, slow down the digital transformation in India. Mm. And primary barrier what I see is, is uh, skill. So uh, skill means that benefit of the cloud technology is, uh, is not aware uh, by the organization. So data security, sovereignty, right. then your security. So these are the things that that is, uh, you know, uh, would be the barrier in terms of adopting 
adopting the cloud technology. So data security and also in terms of skill, like organizations are not aware of cloud technology. Uh, so they are about, but they are not uh, much about the benefits and the functionality of cloud technology. Right. So in a nutshell, so each and everybody is talking about the cloud. Right. But thing is that when they uh, go into the into the deeper, because the innovation is continuously happening, mm. and the technology is continuously changing in a very rapid way. Mm. So if uh, if innovation is happening, technology changing, the organization must be known what technology they need to adopt. Right. So if you see that uh, recently that a lot of uh, cloud adoption is happening, your multi-cloud, your hybrid cloud, your uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, your uh, serverless computing. So these are the basic trends of the cloud computing that is uh, that is getting innovated. But users and customers needs to, uh, needs to finalize what exactly they need to adopt in terms of cloud right. technology. How do they do that? You know, so how do they strategize? Because as you said, cloud technology is rapidly uh, evolving. And so how do they keep pace with these advancements? You know, yeah. how do they know that this is it, this is what I need and this is what I don't need? So there the role of uh, the open source technology comes. So we uh, we at Canonical understand this. So we uh, we are open source technology and very closely work with uh, cloud computing. Okay. So we are committed to stay two step ahead. Mm -hmm. That is the reason why uh, Ubuntu is widely used and most preferred operating system in cloud. Right. So we we have more than sixty five percent of the market share mm -hmm. in the production workload. Mm -hmm. So this uh, innovation for open source technology and cloud computing. So that enables our customer to uh, to become a flexible in terms of using open source technology in cloud computing. Talk to us about the key features of Ubuntu, you know, and you said it offers some sort of customization. So what are the benefits that businesses can derive out of it? As I mentioned that uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, works, uh, works in a uh, different scenario of the cloud computing. Mm. So we work in hybrid cloud model, we work in private cloud model, we work in, uh, uh, in uh, telecommunication NFPs, we work in various uh, technologies that Ubuntu gives to the customer in terms of using and adopting that technology. Right. So we are an open source organization. So uh, normally our, our, uh, we don't sell any software. We provide security mm -hmm. to, our, to the customer. We provide enterprise level of support. We tell them the provenance detail the software which they are using. So, uh, so you know, uh, thing is that customers are the consumer of open source technology. So they are not the contributor. Mm -hmm. So when you are consuming open source technology, so uh, you, you should be knowing whether this technology is secure for your organization or not. Mm -hmm. So security plays uh, plays a very vital uh, role. And we as a uh, canonical provide the security patches for the longer period of time. So you provide that long term support because yes. you very rightly said that, you know, organizations need that sort of hand holding and also, you know, someone to show them a direction and basically be there for them especially when it comes to technology and technology such as cloud computing, you know, where everyone might not understand the nuances of it. So, you know, talk to us about some of that long-term support that you provide yeah. via Ubuntu. We as an organization uh, provide the security patches on the long-term service basis. So we have a security patch that we provide to our customer that is for 10 long year. Okay. So for first five year, so customer, because as I mentioned that we don't sell software. So first five year, you can uh, you can get a security patches free of cost. Mm. And next five year, you will also get the security patches for the same version if you are uh, using uh, that version for your application or for your hardware. So you have you get the flexibility to use Ubuntu operating system or Ubuntu, Ubuntu uh, landscape in your data center for a longer period of time. So that directly or indirectly save the operational cost for that organization. So that is the beauty of the uh, long term support from uh, LTS from uh, from Ubuntu. All right, you touched upon landscape. You know, talk to us about canonical landscape. Yeah. What are the key features of canonical landscape, and you know, how does it actually help business? Basically, canonical landscape helps customer in managing and automating their Ubuntu uh, servers or desktop, or uh, if they are using Ubuntu in the cloud. Right. So it's an automated tool which not only uh, helps in terms of uh, getting the repositories, but also helps in getting the patches in the automated manner. So it reduces the operating cost for the organization because it's a nightmare for the organization to, to you know, manage the virtual machine, manage the server within the organization. So uh, uh, Canonical Landscape has the capability to manage uh, more than 40,000 servers or desktop at a single API. Right. So that is the beauty beauty of uh, Canonical uh, Landscape. And thing is that it's again free of cost. We don't charge for, uh, for Canonical Landscape. You can uh, go for the subscription of Ubuntu Pro 
landscape will be given to you for managing, for patching, for uh, uh, for automating your server uh, landscape. You spoke about you know Ubuntu. Can you talk to us about some of the innovative use cases or you know the way people are leveraging Ubuntu? Everybody is aware that the recent talk of the town that is ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. So ChatGPT is nurtured on uh, cloud computing mm -hmm. and uh, that cloud computing uh, where the chat GPT is nurtured, the underlying uh, technology they are using is from open source world. Mm -hmm. And Ubuntu is the part of that, that journey. So this is how the innovation is happening. So, and uh, we are, we are you know, uh, we have a fantastic uh, f a set of products which we offer to our customers. So if you talk from your private cloud offering, if you talk from your public cloud offering, if you talk from the Kubernetes, if you talk from the live kernel patching or uh, uh, virtual machine. So we have we have an one product only mm. from which the entire landscape within your infrastructure can be managed. And we not only work on the infrastructure part, we also work on the application part. So we have Ubuntu uh, gives you uh, the flexibility to use more than 23,000 in our uh, repository that we call Ubuntu Universe. Mm. So that gives the flexibility to the customer to use it and they, they, they do not uh, worry about the security patches. So we as an organization provide the security patches for those 23,000 applications as well. Recently we have come up with a fantastic enterprise level of support mm. for uh, more than around 30 major applications that is widely accepted and widely used from the open source world. So if you are running those 30, uh, 30, 35 applications on Ubuntu, then you can also get the enterprise level support for those products. So this is this is the first thing that we have done. None of the organizations as of now in the world has uh, adopted this strategy and doing this thing. So why have you done it? Like, you know, is, is it really to push uh, the open source uh, software ethos yeah. In so primary community. primary reason is uh, this that uh, we we as an organization has a thought process that we ask our customer to use open source technology as much as possible mm -hmm. and that's why that is the reason we contribute to the community and you can enjoy the security patches for for the period of five years without paying anything right Okay. So we, we came up with the same strategy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because it's not that the infrastructure layer is uh, is the part of your uh, for your digital journey. Yeah. There is a lot of open source application yeah. that you are also consuming. Yeah. So if you are consuming the open source application then it should be secure. Mm -hmm. So as an uh, as an contributor to the uh, to the uh, open source community we thought this thing that why can't we support on the open source application mm -hmm. as well. So this has this this is the thought that has come from our CEO Mr. Mark World. So uh, he mentioned that uh, you know customers can enjoy using uh, open source technology not only on the uh, infrastructure layer but on the applications layer as well. Right. And if they think that they need an enterprise level of support, then they can just uh, uh, they can subscribe uh, Ubuntu Pro full stack support from Canonical and we will be there for the enterprise level of support so customer right. could focus on their primary business. How a business is leveraging your products? So when you have this kind of support that you're providing to businesses, uh, what's been, uh, you know, the experience from their side? What's been the feedback that they've given you? Uh, you know, how is uh, the offtake happening for your products, for Ubuntu okay. and for Canonical landscape? So like if I talk, if, because you know, uh, my KRA uh, here in Canonical is to take care of India as a territory. Mm -hmm. And India is the you know uh, primary adopter of open source technology if I compare with the mature market as well. Right. So uh, here there are a lot of customers who are consuming, uh, consuming open source technology. We provide enterprise level of support to the customer where they could focus, focus on their primary business. And uh, we have an ecosystem, ecosystem of application and uh, infrastructure, which is provided to the customer on the single SQ. Mm. So it's not that customer has to subscribe for various level of uh, product if right. they are consuming uh, com consuming uh, services from uh, from uh, Canonical. And most important thing that consuming open source technology. Uh, is the one aspect, but second aspect, how well you are deploying those technology in your data center. Mm. Canonical has a strong team of the professional service. We help our customer to deploy it. We go and take the responsibility that we will deploy for you and we will hand over the keys after the successful deployment. So this is the beauty of the open source technology. And if it if it uh, correctly deployed, then you can scale it uh, and sky is the limit. Mm. So uh, this is the strategy. We have a strong professional team uh, for the deployment. We have a strong support team and we have a, a fantastic product that has already been proven. So in India, 
so if you i cannot name those because mm -hmm. there is an nda with the customers but i can give you so either it's a bfsi vertical or it's a government vertical or uh, it's manufacturing so we are present in each and every scenario right. we support the digital journey of india mm -hmm. and we are we are helping those those customers in terms of successful deployment of our technology mm -hmm. and we are supporting them as well all right and they are really happy and they are they are giving us an opportunity to participate in other uh, uh, other opportunity that is coming in uh, coming within those organization all right you know and we wish you great success with it this is now my last question to you karmendra looking ahead what are the kind of innovations that you feel will reshape the business landscape future of the uh, cloud computing and uh, open source technology is continuously evolving mm. and due to the due to the introduction of the new technology uh, new innovation that is happening uh, we uh, and then canonical always try to you know we are always committed to stay to step ahead of, for that we innovate our product we take the feedback from the customer because we are an open source uh, open source organization and we are uh, backed by the strong community in terms of adoptions in terms of uh, innovation so cloud technology is one of the major innovation that is happening so if you talk uh, from the artificial intelligence or machine learning or you talk about the multi cloud adoption or hybrid cloud adoption or robotics or drone so you you can find ubuntu everywhere some some organizations are directly involved with us mm -hmm. some organizations are indirectly involved mm -hmm. but we are helping each and every organization every vertical in terms of supporting their digital journey all right Thank you so very much, Karmendra, for speaking to us. You know, for uh, giving us so many insights when it comes to cloud computing. We wish you and Canonical the very best. Thank you so much, and it's very nice interacting with you. And thanks for having me here. Thanks a lot.